Today is September 24th, 2012, and we are interviewing Joe Marasco at the Illinois State Library. Joe is 87 years old, having been born on February 9th, 1925. My name is Brian Tober, and I'll be the interviewer. Joe, uh, could you state for the record what war and branch of service you served in? I was in the Second World War, and I was a Marine photographer. Okay. And uh, were you drafted or did you enlist? I was drafted. Well, yeah, when you get out of high school, you're 18, you're, you're, you're gone. Yeah. I guess that's... And uh, did you have uh, any say in the branch of service you went into or did just they draft you and you're going into the Marine Corps, you didn't... Well, I had it all arranged previously when I was 17. I wrote all the branches of the service, okay. told them what I, I wanted to be a photographer in the Marine Corps, was the only one that answered and sent me all the paper credentials to make it official and hand it to the draft board and I was no question about what I was going to be. Okay, so you The had only thing is, from Payne to Illinois, you would naturally go to Camp Pendleton in California, but because of photography, I had to go to Quantico, Virginia to photography school. And so, yeah, so you were you were living in Pena then at mm -hmm. the time, and were you born and raised the yeah, whole time? Yeah, I was born and raised in Pena. And do you recall your first days in the service? No, I just went to Paris Island, South Carolina, to boot camp, and it was pretty rough back then. I don't think they allowed to treat you so much uh, roughness like they did then. And But I was in really good health. Uh, uh, had done a lot of running and exercise, so it was not bad for me, but a lot of them couldn't take it. Yeah. <laughs> they broke down and cried. <laughs> yeah. Could you tell us some about boot camp, kind of your training experiences, maybe some of the, the training that you had to go through during boot camp? Oh, just a lot of, oh, I think they tried to train you a lot mentally, like one time they, the officer said, if I hear one of you guys talking after lights out, you're going to run around this building three times. I didn't hear a peep from anybody. He made us get up, <laughs> run around, or like if we're marching and there's a wall, and if he don't say reverse, you know, or something, you march right into that wall or else you're in trouble. You know, it's a mental. <laughs> so is it, it mental. Was, it was much physical or as much mental as Mental, yeah, physical, a lot of mental. I remember a lot of mental. <laughs> Which is what you needed, and of course, I think they kind of brainwashed you about. Well, I think it started before before high school. How terrible the Japanese were, and how the, all the pictures you would see they looked like monsters, you know. Yeah. Come to find out, they were nice people. Yeah. <laughs> afterwards, but uh, if you didn't get trained, you couldn't go in there and do your job as a, in a service. If you had to shoot somebody, you could. Right. You had to develop a hatred first. So they knew what they were doing. Now, do you remember any of your, your instructors from training camp or boot camp? No. Uh, no. How did you get through it? Was there anything, I mean, did you do anything in particular? Um, I got through real easy. I was in excellent shape and anything they put at me I could handle. Yeah. Did you do high school sports or anything? Were you in shape from that? No, I, I did a lot of exercise like running and weightlifting and tumbling and walking on my hands and crazy things like that. So I was in good shape. Now, did you know going in, since you were, you said you were riding, you know, to the different branches or whatever before, you, were you physically getting ready for it, knowing what was ahead of you then? Were you training then to before you even got to training camp? No, I, I never thought. It's true. Uh, just, just naturally things you do when you're in high school. Yeah. Okay. And what was your rank? Corporal. Corporal. And uh, in what locations did you serve? I started out at uh, boot camp in Paris Island, South Carolina. Then they went, sent me to Quantico, Virginia, to photography school. And then we had training other than that in some other states, I don't know, on how to make 
landings at nighttime and uh, just a regular general run of things. But other than that, mainly Paris Island and then Quantico, Virginia. And from there, I got sent to uh, Saipan. And that's where you stayed at during, and then you went to Nagasaki, correct? Then also. Well, no, I went from Saipan then to Okinawa. Okay. And I got injured in Okinawa, back injury, and then went to Nagasaki, Japan. What was your, I guess, job assignment? Just to photograph everything and especially uh, look at things to see if. Anything might catch your eye, you know, that an average person wouldn't even care about. And the one thing I noticed was that everything was gone, but I ran across a set of like, false teeth, I guess, <laughs> and it looked like maybe they had gold on them. And I stuck them in my pocket. Of course, I shouldn't have done that because they're radioactive. Oh, yeah. But I, I kept them, and then I put them away somewhere at home, and I, I was looking for them yesterday. Never did find them. <laughs> I thought I'd put them in the attic underneath the insulation. Boy, I took up all the insulation and I never did find it. So, now, um, did you have previous experience in photography then? Oh, yeah, I started out probably 12 years old. I got oh, interested. Really? So I was doing high school photography for the yearbook and taking group pictures for families and making a pretty good income off of it. At 12 years old? Before I was in the service. Was there somebody in the family that influenced that, or was it just on your no, own? No, no, uh, no, I just took it up on my own. Nobody else in the family was interested. Uh, did, so did you see combat then during your time? Yeah, I was in on Saipan during the combat there, and then some in Okinawa, and then, oh, aboard troop ship, we got shot up once in a while. Did and, you? Uh, yeah, aboard a troop ship, I was in Okinawa, and uh, I guess this pilot, Japanese pilot, figured, you always think of a plane coming down, you know, and dropping them off. I looked over the railing, and he was tootling along pretty fast. So and, how high was the railing? Oh, about, about like that. Oh, okay. And he was down below that. And, but then we were, our ships were headed this way, and he hit a ship that was the other direction. He, he did it, hit it in a, I don't know if when he got there whether he went up and down or out. I don't know anything about it. So yeah. were there casualties in your unit? Then? Oh yeah, oh yeah. Now, did you s sustain any injuries yourself? Back injury. Uh, then from there I got orders to go to uh, well, no, that's right. I was in Nagasaki. I mentioned that, didn't I? Yeah, we, yeah. we briefly, we just went as far as where you're at. And I got along real good with the people because before I got there, aboard a troop ship, I started studying Japanese while everybody else was playing cards or yeah. dice, you know. So when I got off the ship, there was a girl there, and I started talking to her. Well, because of that, I became well-known amongst the Japanese, and I found out they were really, really nice people. And uh, that's what made it bad because I, I didn't get all their names and addresses yet. And then I got a call that go to China. So that ended a really nice visit I had there. And when the war was over and you knew you weren't going to get shot or killed and right. or nothing like that. And then turn around and next time, time you're in, Japan, in China fighting the Chinese, if you joined the eighth, 6th Marine Regiment in Tsingtao, China. So that wasn't too good. I didn't like that. Yeah, were you, you know, how fluent were you in Japanese? Could you speak, converse pretty well? Did they speak I did English speak pretty or? well. I just started learning again because there's a Japanese girl in Pena and I can reach in and there it is. You got your cards? <laughs> Memor Rememorizing all, right. all the words. For, well, I never use it, but just for the heck of it. Mm -hmm. But they were not, you know, that's kind of, you're end up in brainwashed, I guess, from the time you're in high school, how terrible they are. And then when the war is over, they had nice people. I enjoyed them. Okay. 
And they never once threatened me or uh, even one time we were photographing uh, up on top of a mountain where they had the guns up there. And I came down and the officer said, did you get the serial number? I said, no, here, just take this young Japanese boy. He was about 20 years old. Up on the mountain by myself, no trouble, just nice as they could be. So there, some place I, I don't know if there's a, I finally met up with a Japanese uh, man working in uh, a factory in Chevyville. Oh, that's not, and I got to talking to him and he made arrangements to where I could uh, write a story about my experiences there to a Japanese newspaper and and I hope I kept a copy of it because it was uh, no I don't, don't see it there but it was uh, and they printed it in this Japanese paper oh, really? all in Japanese and then they sent me a copy of it so I, I'm sorry I didn't bring it with me no it's not in there Now, you were there pretty much right after the bomb was dropped, correct? We was there in a sense of photographers in, in early, in August. And in, well, really, there weren't any main uh, Marine troops there. They were in an area out maybe 10 miles away from Nagasaki. So we were mostly photographers, correspondents, and uh, Japanese translators, uh, our interpreters were there, but that was all. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, they didn't get in until September. And did you have any? You, did you have lingering effects or anything from being on there? So yeah. Soon? Afterwards, I got real sick, and uh, uh, I kind of threw it up and had boils and styes, and I got down to about 125 pounds. But I just I was too busy. Working with my photography business to worry about it. Yeah, I just kind of wore it out. <laughs> how, how long did you have? Did the effects last? Oh yeah, yeah, it lasted a long time. Uh, and uh, and then it had uh, different effects. I mean, like I was in a Catholic church that's got a big dome, and I was just sitting there minding my own business, not thinking about anything. And then I just got dizzy and passed out, and they took me to the hospital. Well, then second time, and then the third time, they sent me to Springfield to a hospital, and then a psychiatrist talked to me. And I, I wasn't thinking nothing about my time in the service, but he said that must have been what happened. I, my caused me to have mental. How much longer was that after your time in the service? What was that? Oh, it was quite a few years yet. Oh, yeah, maybe twenty years. Oh, that went on. Yeah, a long time. And then, so from then, they moved me to the back of the church, or I just moved my wife and I to the back of the church, away from that dome, and that was the end of it. Isn't that odd? Yeah. <laughs> I never <laughs> passed out or... Uh, the only thing, uh, sometimes what bothers me, I come out in front, and then there's this whole table full of, what the heck, army weapons and stuff from the service, Oh, right now you yeah, mean today? Yeah, boy, I got out of there. I don't know why, but I got out of there. Yeah. I don't want no part of that. Yeah, I think we have some reenactment um, people out front mm -hmm. who set that up today. So, and you said, uh, so during your time when you were there, right after the bomb, when you were actually in Japan, you, you felt safe? You never felt threatened? Or, no, or never. Like no, they treated us so good. In fact, I... Even went to church, a Catholic church, in another town near Nagasaki, and it was just like our church, except all in Japanese. Yeah. So we got along. Were you well protected, or were you just? I know you were a photographer. Were you just by yourself? Or no, I could. The only time I we had trouble in China was they said when you're going on an assignment, never, never stop your car until you get to where you're going. So because you never know where, uh, where to. Nationalist Chinese might be having trouble with the communists, and they, they mistake me for a communist. <laughs> so, yeah, that's the only thing in China we had to be real careful.
Or like when you do guard duty, normally you'd walk from one block to the next block and turn around. There you don't do that. You walk just a little bit and check everything and change your walk maybe the opposite direction because you just, there are communists all over there, but they look no different than the ordinary people. So yeah. <laughs> you had to be careful. Were you awarded any medals or citations? No, I don't think that, I, not that I know of. I was a sharpshooter on a oh, rifle really? range, but yeah, because we used to shoot a lot with rifles when we were kids, so it was real easy to be a sharpshooter. But then I didn't keep the rifle, they gave me a pistol, 45. Oh, okay. That was all I was allowed to carry. Is that because you were a photographer then? Mm -hmm. Okay. And then we had to roll a black tape all the time in case our, see our camera had a bellows on it. If you got shot, you'd, you'd have to patch it up with the black tape, keep it working. And so how did you get along with your uh, officers and fellow soldiers? Real good, except there was a, oh, this one character. That, <laughs> he was a, he was our Japanese interpreter. I don't know where. It, Boy, I, tell you, I can't find anything today. Uh, I don't have his picture, but he he was a kind of a troublemaker, and a, we were on the patrol. Well, he was causing trouble, and I went over to see. Yeah, that guy there. So was he part of your unit then, or was he an interpreter? Was he? A, he was a Japanese interpreter, okay. but he was a. I think he's from Mexico. Okay. <laughs> and uh, I went over to see what was the trouble, and because they were out away from the area where we lived there, and he uh, turned around and he hit me, <laughs> knocked me down, and I was pretty bad shape. And so next day, well, we were on patrol. He got shot, and somebody said, "Boy, you sure carry a grudge, don't you?" And I said, "No, I didn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> the Japanese shot him." But then he was pretty happy about it. Uh, about getting shot? Yeah, because he come out alive. He was alive, and, and he got to go to the hospital, and they took care of him. And then he got to go stateside, and he knew it is he's not going to be shot no more. Yeah. Nobody's going to kill him, <laughs> so he's pretty happy about it. But that is a story about him. Some of the things that okay. uh, while we were there, he'd go up in the mountains and to the caves and talk to Japanese civilians to surrender. So he saved he said a thousand, probably a thousand lives. Oh, wow. Boy, he's crazy, though. I, <laughs> I think they get that way when they're sometimes in their service too long. Has he been in there a long time? Yeah, too much combat. Then that was the end of that. I went into... Uh, oh, when I was in... Uh, Going to have to go to China... I thought I'd just get aboard of something and there I'd go to China. Well, it, we got on a plane at Nagasaki and it was a seaplane and we couldn't get it off of the water. It was a mail plane, had a lot of mail because there were several of it. So we walked, he said, walk to the back of the ship and then the plane and then back. To, and then it got level, we took off. And I thought, well, here we go to China. He landed at Okinawa and said, that's as far as he's going. <laughs> so we had to go to airport and ask pilots, is anybody going to China? Well, we got a ride to Shanghai, China. Then we had to go around Shanghai asking anybody going to Tsingtao. <laughs> so we made it to Tsingtao, but that's the way the Marine Corps, they'll tell you where you got to go, but you, it's up to you to, get, up there, to, you right? to get there. <laughs> and I didn't know any different. I figured that's the way everybody worked in it. So that's the way we got to Tsingtao, China after, well, at least I got to spend mm, three days in Shanghai before we had to leave. So I enjoyed that. Was, did you have time off then to, mm -hmm. to go around? In fact, I really shouldn't have been out there like that by myself because that was uh, kind of dangerous. But I walked down this street and visited and on and on, switched over a block to the next street and come back out and I looked up in the big old... Sign says, uh, restricted to service personnel. Nobody's supposed to be in there. <laughs> I just picked the right street to get in on. It didn't cause any trouble. But just, I've, I walked, 
I've been in every, every place, every spot in that area, taking pictures from any angle, and we'd, we'd write down our information about where the picture was taken and in which case. direction it was taken and why it was taken. And that's Nagasaki there? Yeah. Mm -hmm. How much, how much was left standing? Was there much or I you know, it's a building a, there? And... Nagasaki is in kind of a bowl-shaped area. When you get to the top and out, there's no damage. Maybe just a, a girlfriend or took off part of the end of her home, just a roof. And the same way all the way around is once you get over the ridge, that's okay. But then a lot of the people I got to know after a while, you begin to notice they were dropping off from radiation. They were too close to the main. Right. They got a lot of injuries, but they weren't killed outright. And they thought they were, you know, okay. But radiation will eat you up after you get too long. So that was the end of that. How long did you spend on, in Nagasaki? Oh, about then? six months. Six months? Yeah. Uh, I, got, I, did, I really liked it there. That's why I kind of griped because I had to go to China. Now, were you actually staying in Nagan? Did you guys have a, you have a base there where you were going just out? Right, did you go? Just right outside the atomic bomb area. Okay. Just a little distance there. Just go up a hill and it's all pretty safe up that way. Except for radiation, which we didn't know about. Did you keep any sort of diary or anything? No, uh, no I didn't. Just to watch photographs, that's all I got. Uh, could you tell me about a couple of your uh, most memorable experiences? Well, uh, one thing has kind of surprised me. I was in Saipan and I didn't, I had a line of fire and the bullets were coming back kind of close and you could just go, whoosh, you could hear them. That's all I was doing. I didn't think anything more about it except, yeah, I could hear them. Wisdom by my head. Do you have a helmet on? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, uh, and that experience with him is kind of a strange thing where he was so ready to... <laughs> uh, now he got shot in the next day and they told me, kidding me about, boy, I sure carry a grudge. I yeah. said, no, no, I didn't do that. <laughs> well, it was just this accident he got hit. And were you able to stay in touch with, with family during your time oh, yeah. over there? When, when I, yeah, I kept writing letters back and forth. And uh, did you did you have anything or did you perform, you know, did you do anything for good luck or did any of that sort of thing, any sort of superstitious or but just uh, like a, a routine or anything? No, I don't know quite. How's that again? Oh, did, did you do anything for good luck? Did you guys? Oh, no. no nothing no, like that. Uh, no good luck charms or anything? No, I didn't even. I don't think I remember even praying. Okay. <laughs> and uh, what were supplies like? Did you have plenty of supplies during your time there? Uh, well, there was K rations. You know, it wasn't much, wasn't much to eat on, you know, in Saipan, Okinawa. But, and uh, in fact, I was sort of. I had a picture somewhere I was cooking a can of K-ration or whatever it was. And, and uh, it was good food after we got to, to, to Japan, I mean to Nagasaki. Food was good because we ate at the Marine barracks, their quarters, whatever they had. And China was the same way when we were with the troops. And times we had to be out on patrol, we'd just take along something quick to service, eat it. That's it, that's uh, what, what did you do to entertain yourselves? Did you guys do anything to entertain yourselves during your time there? No, no there really wasn't nothing to do that I can remember uh, on, on the islands and in Japan, I just spent a lot of time with the people, talking the language and visiting with them and and China, that was out. That was, I couldn't understand. I didn't want to even learn the language. And, and we were, uh, you didn't get no contact much with any civilians because any nationalist Chinese got out of there 
and went to Taiwan or somewhere like that for safety's sake. So we didn't have nothing to do with civilians, but strictly a Nationalist Army. We were part of the Nationalist Army. So I didn't get I, to know I, much I, about I didn't understand the word stormy. Hold the what? Did you understand the word a stormy? National. Oh, I didn't get the Nationalist Army. Oh, oh nation, yeah, yeah, Nationalist. That's what I'm, <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. They were, they were just young people, young kids. They just, they, whatever, they, they didn't, them, they catch a, they didn't have no prisons when nationalists catch a communist, they'd shoot them. No, oh, really? Just do away with it. What else are you going to do with them? <laughs> they had no one to have to feed them and put them in a prison or nothing. They didn't bother with that. Kind of brutal, but that's life. That was war. That's a, oh, this is a Catholic church. Oh, there was, it is just partially. And, and, and this whole Catholic population, more or less, was in Nagasaki, and that's where the bomb hit, right smack on the center of the Catholic population. And I was a Catholic, but I thought, <laughs> boy, then I take good care of us Catholics. The Lord should have said, move away from. Uh, and I don't know why, Dave, it's all, all centered in Nagasaki. I never heard of it anymore uh, out in the country or. Uh -huh. So I, I know you said you didn't really do a whole lot to entertain yourself. Did you ever have entertainers that came through to see your units or anything while you were there? Mm, I don't remember any. Uh, and what, uh, what did, did you get leave while you were there? What, what would you do when you went on leave? Well, when I was at stateside, I just went into uh, Washington, D.C. because I was at uh, Quantico when I was just. 20, 30 miles away. Oh, okay. So that's the only place I went was in Washington, D.C. <clears throat> and I think I was supposed to have a leave to go stateside, go to two weeks to go home, but I got called in sooner and I didn't get to, didn't get to go. I went on into Saipan from then. So, so you never, when you were overseas, you never got leave or anything once you were overseas? No, I uh, know. Do you recall any humorous or unusual events or anything during your time? No, I just uh, don't remember anything. Which... Were there pranks that you'd pull on other on other servicemen or anything? No? No, it's probably too serious to do anything yeah. like that. I'm <laughs> too wrapped up in photography. I was always on assignment someplace. I had my own Jeep and okay. they'd tell me where to go and, and I'd hunt down the place in Japan or China or wherever, they would send me out on assignments. And Now, would you do all the developing and everything? Did you have, how did you? We developed some, but the majority of the pictures was mailed to Washington, D.C. for them to use okay. as they see fit. And these that I took were kind of separate. I did that on my own, aside from what we sent into nah, China, yeah. oh, to Washington, D.C. Would you have a dark room set up with you then, kind of, so you could develop? If mm -hmm. Okay. What, Even on Saipan, we was all set up. What kind of camera were you using? A uh, four by five speed graphic. That's pretty big now, considering the cameras now that are so little. And so it's a lot bigger than a thirty-five millimeter that I'd be familiar with. The film something. holders were pretty good size, four by five inch. And now the digital cameras, you don't even have flash bulbs or film or nothing. Yeah. Just it's all in the key disc. So how many pictures could you take at a time with your camera? Could well, this, uh, it came in a pack of 12 exposures. Normally what we used at the studio, a film holder had only two sheets of film. You took one side and turned around and used the other. But we had a 12 to a pack. Okay. And they had a special name for that. But then we just packed the whole thing in and mailed it in. And Um, do you re do you recall the day your service ended then? Mm. Where you were at, or well, I had to go to from uh, California. I went straight to uh, Chicago, 
that's where it's a discharge place. That's all. Um, well, I was aboard the ship before I was going to go stateside. I put in a complaint that I wanted to have my back checked while I was stateside to see if they could. So they took took me then to a Heinz Veterans Hospital, and I had spent a day there and I got a ten percent disability for nervous condition. Never touched my back. <laughs> Never did nothing for it. So now, was um, when your service ended? Is that because you, uh, because the war had ended, mm -hmm. or because you had fulfilled your service to the war? So what was? How long were you actually in the? Just about three years. Three years. Then uh, what did uh, did you start a new career? You said you went into you just right after the war you went into photography. Yeah, then? Mm -hmm. so but just then continued. I went to photography school on a GI Bill. Oh, did, okay. Took care of that right away. And where did you go to school at? Dallas, Texas. And then from then I come on back to painting, opened up my business. And how many years did you do that? Well, I was sixty-two when I was in a car wreck and I was hurt pretty bad and. Uh, I come back out and tried to operate the studio, but I had such severe headaches, we just closed it up. And uh, then I don't know, it was eight or ten years, and then suddenly they just went away. The headaches disappeared. I haven't had one since then. Oh, the lady driving the car was in the early stages of Alzheimer's, and we didn't know it, and she drove right across the highway. And we got hit, and then we hit a telephone post to kill her husband and put me in the hospital. That wasn't quite fair because we had just been to the church in Mount Zion, and we belonged to a prayer group, you know, everybody was in the prayer group, and then you come outside and always get killed. Oh <laughs> that didn't seem fair. So some of the people pray to the Lord, the Lord will take care of me. Well, he won't take care of you. You take what you get. Yeah. <laughs> you might be. Did you develop any close friends or anything during your time in the service then? I did, but I didn't. wasn't able to keep up with any of them because that getting sent to China kind of killed my chances of getting addresses and, yeah. you know, making any arrangements. So none of your close friends went with you to China then? Mm, no. Were you the only photographer then in your unit or...? I don't know how many. I, I was the only one that they sent at the time. Okay, so they, so they, and then there was maybe a movie photographer who went along with me and one officer. I don't know. It's a, there wasn't much explanation. Like maybe all the photographers were getting killed off there in China. and Because I got called real quick. I didn't. Right. I mean, it was called one night and I had to leave four o'clock in the morning. So maybe it was pretty serious. They needed somebody quick. Was that the most anxious time in going to China? Was that of all the service that you did? Was that sort of the well, yeah, most you know, threatening, was, I guess, or was that part of the time you're out in communist territory and you didn't, but you had to be there and they're pretty brutal people. I didn't like them. Do you attend any reunions or anything? No. no. Do you belong to any veterans organizations? No, I, I guess I got, by getting sent from Japan to China, I got separated from everybody in on the 2nd Marine Division, and I never did get back together or know when the reunions were, in fact. Um, so how would you say your service and experiences has affected your life then? Well, it makes you appreciate being alive <laughs> because I, I come pretty close to not having a life. But it makes you, well, I, I think boot camp kind of takes you, an 18 year old, it'll mature you a lot faster and you're able to handle the problems of life because they're kind of, nothing means that important that you get upset, you know, when you've been through a war. Your attitude changes about. That's why I can't understand people up and committing suicide for something that don't make sense when they got a thankful they got a life to live. 
Now, how would you say your military experience has influenced your thinking about war or the military in general? Well, it seems to me all these wars are so senseless that we got the Muslims and the different religious and they're fighting over somebody burned the Koran. Okay, we'll kill 20 people. And somebody said about the Mohammed, and well, we'll have a war over that. And silly, it's, it's no sense in it. That could go on for the next thousand years. I mean, what's the point of it? I don't even think they know for sure about religion. I mean, the Muhammad, he's so great, and, and, and on and on. But then when you come right down to it, they're not going to... They can't save your life or do nothing. I mean, your life goes on. Man. It's nice to believe they know what they're talking about, but I don't know if they can go back in history and prove they don't even know how the world began, so how are they going to know about religion and all that. Boy, they're getting close to I was reading several articles about <clears throat> they're doing things that are, I don't know, they're getting closer to the original beginning with the big explosion, you oh, know, that, yeah. and I got a, some books I've been reading on that. But where does the, you know, the beginning of life, though, that's, that's what's be kind of interesting how that got started. I mean, it had to be a beginning, but nobody knows for sure who or how or why. A lot of people think they know, I think. <laughs> then someday you never know. We may not all be here. This yeah. crazy planet might blow up. <laughs> so did you, are there any particular photos or anything that you've brought in that you want to share? Or no, I just about? thought Is in case a... somebody needed a photo for okay. something to do. They could pick out whatever they wanted to and okay. copy it. But. Okay, great. Well, I think that's all the questions I had for you. Joe, is there anything else you'd like to add? No, uh, no. I, I think there's a, quite an experience to come out of high school and go into three years in the Marines. But. Yeah, <laughs> I would say so. And, uh, maybe it's a good thing and maybe a bad thing. Mentally, I've had some problems, like passing out in a church and um, things like that. But it's it comes and goes. Yeah, <laughs> take day one day at a time. Okay. Well, thanks for your time for the interview, and, and thanks for your service. After I leave, and driving down the street, I'll say, "Boy, I should have told him something. I should have told him. I should have wrote him all in the notes." But well, anyway, we can do it. We can sit down and do another one. So. Well, thanks again, yeah, Joe. Yeah, I hope I can be of any help to you. <laughs>